Hi, thanks for using TAMLAB and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to install and configure the direct connection plugin for Horizon which is a really cool little plugin because uh, in a typical Horizon environment your Horizon client would connect to a connection server to receive its entitlements and then that connection server depending on the configuration would either uh, pass through tunnel or broker that connection directly to a virtual machine running the Horizon agent which is great and very scalable and, and comes with many 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 features but sometimes if you've got a very very small environment or you're just doing testing and you want to bypass the connection server or just for the fun of it in your home lab and you want a really high performance connection to a lab machine for example um, you can buy, do without the connection server uh, and use the direct connection plugin instead which gives you still access to PC over IP and BLAST protocols and acts as a miniature connection server running with inside the VM. So quite a, quite a very cool little thing you can do. Let's have a quick look. But before we go into the actual VM itself, we need to go and do a few prereqs in the background. So here's my virtual machine. It's a Windows virtual machine running uh, Windows 10, which is you need Windows 10 or better for this to work. I need to go in here and make sure that under my virtual video RAM I have at least 128 megabits of video memory. Okay. Likewise, if I go into my VMware options, this is from the documentation under advanced and under configuration parameters. There is a parameter which is not in here by default. If you have a, um, a virtual machine added to a, a desktop pool in Horizon, it adds this, but obviously we're not doing that. So sometimes without this setting, you get a black screen. So go add parameter in the bottom type svga.enable screen DMA and in the value put true. Okay, so let's go to our virtual machine and put it up. <coughs> okay, there's a few things you're going to need. Um, going into the Customer Connect portal, I'm going to show you how to download this. Go to Desktop and End User Computing, find Horizon and go view Download Components. And under Horizon, which has a version, doesn't really matter, go to Downloads. And you'll need a few bits from inside this page. You're going to need the Horizon Agent, so download that. You're going to need the Horizon Agent Direct Connection Plugin. And the GPO Bundle if you want to do some configuration. If you want to con configure um, Web Access, then you can do that from here. So... Let's minimize. Okay, I've already got those downloaded in here. So we've got the Horizon Agent and the Direct Connect plugin. Notice they are the same version. It's very important to have version parity across the board. It's also one important to note that the installation order is really important. We've got VMware tools already installed in this virtual machine. So you install the virtual machine tools and then you install the Horizon Agent, and then you just install the Direct Connection plugin. If you install them in any other order, you are likely going to experience some problems. Now, from the documentation, it says that um, if you're doing the, direct, the agent with the intent to use it with the Direct Connect plugin, it's better to do it from the command line and add this extra parameter. So I basically um, changed directory into the folder where that executable is downloaded, added the slash v parameter with the VDM skip broker registration equals one parameter, which just means that it's not going to try and connect to a connection server during the install. Other than that, the installation is exactly the same. So we add that parameter and in a few seconds, our agent installation will start. It's going to ask for escalation, which we give it. It's going to take a few seconds now before the actual main part of the agent install becomes visible. So I just have to be a little bit patient on this one. And here it goes. Why do I need to reboot? I don't think I need to reboot at all. But let's just do that reboot and do that again. Okay, take two. Had to reboot because in the background this machine was installing some Windows updates. So we're back where we started. So we've got our VMware Horizon agent with our parameter to um, skip the broker registration. So let's start that off. 
Hopefully we get further this time. Elevate the permissions. Let the agent run. Takes a few seconds to show the main window. We can see from the taskbar that it is actually working. Okay, this looks better. So now we can see that when we're installing 2209 of the Horizon Agent, click Next, agree to the general terms, we choose IP4 for our protocol, and we've got, we can install USB direction if we want, and we can also uh, install anything else we like, I'm going to install the performance tracker because I like to just see what's going on inside there when I'm connected to it, and that will do, and then that's, both of those are completely optional. Don't have to do anything. Okay, a little warning about security for USB direction. Click install. Okay, it's going to ask me to reboot that virtual machine. So I'm just going to pause the video while I reboot. Okay, so the VM's rebooted now. If I go to the start menu and scroll down, we can see that we now have the Horizon Performance Tracker installed. If I go to Control Panel, eventually show me that I've got the agent installed. Boom, there we go, version 8.7. Okay, now we can install the Direct Connect plugin. Again, escalate the privileges. Take a few seconds. Install the VMware Horizon Direct Connection plugin. Next. Agree to the terms of the license agreement. Leave the port as standard 443 and let it configure the Windows file. It'll automatically open that port for us. Click install. And finish. Okay, and we're done. So what I'm going to do now is just going to terminate this um, RDP connection. Yeah, noting my IP address 10.01.174. Click OK. I'm going to fire up my Horizon client, and I'm going to add a server, and that is going to be the same IP 10.0.1.174. Connect. I can, if I wish, install a certificate. Um, I'm not going to the purpose of this. If you want to do that for a production installation, that details on how to do that are in the administration PDF that you can download. I'm going to log on to my test server. Take a few seconds to negotiate the connection. And boom, we are now connected to my desktop using direct connection plugin as a connection server, using the client and connecting via Blast. I'm just going to, what you can't see in the video is this is actually stretched across both my monitors. So I'm going to set this to be full screen on single monitor. You can see we're using Blast. I've got all the um, options of the client um, available to me. That I can do, I can add drive shares, all that kind of good stuff. So that's excellent. So what I'm going to show you now is how to add to the group policy. So if I go to the MMC now, Microsoft Management Console to MMC, go to File, Add, Remove, Snap In, go to uh, Group Policy Object Editor, finish. Actually, what I'm also going to do here quickly is show the local users and groups, so I'll add that as well. Yeah. <clears throat> just something I want to show you in there first as well. Okay, so if I just expand the local users and groups, you'll see now that we have a new group installed locally. So I'm logged on as administrative account, so I'm straight in. If I go in here, then I should, yeah, authenticated users. If you want specific users to be in here or groups, you can add them in here. If they can't get in, there's a permissions issue, add them in here. For the moment, we've got all, all authenticated users are allowed in. So there's that. If I expand my local computer policy, you'll see in here under administrative templates, there's nothing related to VMware. 
Don't try and install them using this method, okay? It won't work. That's for um, legacy. So the way to install those templates is to, let me just uh, minimize that. I've extracted that GPO bundle already. If you see in here, we've got a whole bunch of ADMX files. Down the bottom, we've got one that says view agent direct connection or ADMX. And a whole bunch of different language folders up here. And there is inside the English US folder, there is a corresponding ADML file. And we need to transfer both the ADML and the ADMX files into the right place. And you can configure other um, agent parameters with this, but this is specifically the direct agent connect, direct connect agent plugin. So I'm going to bring up another window. I'll bring it over here. And I expand the folder location. C Windows Policy Definitions. Scroll down a bit. There it is, Policy Definitions. And we'll see something very similar to over here. A whole bunch of ADMX files and a language folder. So I'm going to take that View Direct Agent Connection ADMX file, drop it into this folder. Actually, I don't want to move it, I want to copy it. Matter, I suppose. So I'm just going to uh, copy it there. It should ask me for permission, which I give. Now, if I was to run the local policy editor now without copying the ADML file, it would tell me it was missing a file and it wouldn't work. So we're going to go into the language folder and copy that. Same, it's got to match the names. This is viewagent direct connection .adml. Copy that in here. Okay, I suspect I've got to reload this, it won't just appear. I can try hitting refresh and see what happens. I suspect I'll need to reload it. Uh, no, let's see a refresh, let's just do that again. So, close it, no. MMC, you can save it if you want to, just to make it easy to open up. I'm not going to do this again. Add a remove snap in, group policy object editor, local finish, local computer, click OK. Now when I expand the local computer policy and the computer configuration and the administrative templates, I now have a view a, oops, a view agent direct connection configuration. And in here, with a whole bunch of settings that I can configure about MMR, about session timeouts, connecting certain USB devices, idle timeouts, what applications are enabled protocol and network settings, change the blast port. Um, if I'm using NAT, I can change the external IP address. If you want to use NAT and, and expose all of these via port numbers, you can refer to the administrative uh, template. So now I can configure those as I want. I can put in disclaimer text and that kind of stuff for when people log on. I can have text and all sorts of things. So lots in there you can have a play with. Okay, so that is how you would configure it using local policy. Obviously, if you've got Active Directory, you could do that in Active Directory as to policy and apply it in the domain. Okay, what we're going to do now is have a quick look at the optimization tool. This is not really part of the scope of this video, but I downloaded it at the same time. And if you were creating a bunch of these machines that you connect to locally, uh, not, not using a, um, a connection server, then this can make them much more efficient on your server. It takes a few seconds for it to load. Now you can see a whole bunch of different tabs here. You can work from these from left to right. So the first thing you need to do is come down to the bottom right here and click Analyze. And what it will do, it will scan your computer for all of the things that it thinks it can turn off and disable to streamline the performance of your um, virtual desktop machine. Now, if I was to hit optimize now, down here in the bottom right hand side as well, it would go through and configure all of those um, as per all of these ticked items. I strongly recommend that you go through these in great detail and, um, you know, have a good look and make sure you're aware of what's going on. For example, if I click and expand that one, you can see lots of stuff about machine policies and registry being changed. So you can do that and go through this in, in detail. One other thing you can do is look at the common options up here and expand that and this gives you some of the common options and these group some of these settings together for an outcome based um, configuration. So you can choose the visual effects, notifications you can receive, how to change Windows update, some other bits and bobs and common options to make things easier in here. I'm not going to click optimize but this is the point where you would click optimize. 
you can if you weren't if you're going to clone this machine out then generalize the machine by changing whatever settings you wanted to in here and then clicking generalize down the bottom and finally the last thing you do before you shut the machine down for cloning would be to uh, check which you wanted to run in here and then click finalize and this would then be the last thing you do before you shut this down and clone off this box so that'll do for this video. I hope you found it useful. Uh, if you see anything in here that you need to know more about, either contact your TAM or in the comments and maybe we'll update this video. All right, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.